morning. My name is Peter Stitcher and I'm the aquatic biologist and chief fly geek at Ascent Fly Fishing. And today we're going to be fishing the Waterton Canyon section of the South Platte River. For those in Denver who are looking for a quick getaway to get on the water and start catching some trout, Waterton Canyon is a great option. It's located between Strontia Reservoir and Chatfield Reservoir, about 30 minutes from downtown Denver. The trail is about 6.2 miles long and only has an elevation gain of 700 feet. Waterton Canyon can be a really fun water to fish. It's close to home, easy to access, and there are a lot of fish in this section of the South Platte. So today, we're going to take you up the canyon, show you some of the sweet spots where the fishing is going to be the hottest, sample the bugs, and help you match the hatch so you can fish this water like a pro. The lower half of Waterton Canyon is a multi-use fishery, so you can use bait, lures, or flies. Just before you get to the Marston Diversion at approximately 2.9 miles, the river turns over to artificial flies and lures only. So Waterton Canyon is owned and operated by Denver Water, and they've been gracious enough to open it up to trail runners, bikers, the backpackers, and fly fishers. The type of habitat that you're seeing behind me right here is very typical of the engineered, manufactured habitat that you're going to see in Waterton Canyon. What we're going to find is these constructed weirs are going to back up a pool of calm, deep water immediately upstream. You're going to find a lot of trout holding in that water. Also, immediately downstream, as that water wraps up and plunges down and over this weir, it's going to create a deep plunge pool. Also, a well-oxygenated, food-rich, protected area where you're going to find a lot of trout. In addition to those manufactured rock weirs that we saw up and down the canyon, the other real sweet spots to fish on the South Platte and Waterton Canyon are going to be the diversion dams. There are three major dams and diversions up and down the Waterton Canyon. At 1.9 miles, you're going to find the Highline Canal Diversion. At 3 miles, we have the Marston Diversion. And at 6.2 miles, we have the dam below Strontia Reservoir. At times of low water, these fish are going to be moving up and down in this section. And we're going to see a greater concentration of fish downstream in some of these deeper runs and pools. But at higher flows, when those fish are getting blown out and really stressed out by high energy waters later in the spring, they're going to move up under these diversions and you'll have schools of hundreds of fish. So if you want some hot spots to fish in Waterton, go to the diversions. The tools that we're going to be using to match the hatch today can all be found in the River Oracle Streamside Match the Hatch Kit, which will attach cleanly to any standard wading belt or fly pack strap. Here's what you're going to find in your River Oracle Streamside Match the Hatch Kit. Each kit is made out of a ripstop nylon, is rugged and ready for the water. You're going to get a, a Sci-Fly Sane to help you sample the water, a rugged aluminum coated fly fishing thermometer, a pair of sample tweezers and a pencil, six half ounce invertebrate sample vials so that you can put your samples in there, get a fisheye view of that hatch, take it back to your fly bench and tie the best patterns. There is a hook size chart and measurement key that you can put your invertebrates on there, measure them, identify them, and find the best size hook in your fly box, as well as a five times invertebrate magnifier to help you identify what you're seeing on the water. So we're going to be taking our invertebrate sample under the water immediately downstream of the Highline Canal Diversion and upstream of some super fishy looking water where we expect to find some trout. So I'm going to stretch the Sci-Fly Sane from the Match the Hatch Kit over the basket of my net and we're going to be sampling in these ripples, this fast drop of water right here. This is where we're going to find our best sample of what's going on. We're going to be kicking immediately upstream of our net so that we can catch all the bugs that are drifting loose and down in the current. This whole process should just take you a couple minutes. So after you pull this net out of the water, at first glance, if you've gotten a good sample, your net's gonna be full of algae and leaves and sand stirred up from the bottom of the river. And there is a diverse community of aquatic insects in here. We have a number of stoneflies, caddis larvae, mayfly nymphs and midge larvae strewn throughout this sample. We're gonna bring this into the fly box now and start breaking down the best patterns to match the hatch on Waterton Canyon. As you can see from a very quick sample of the bottom of this section of the river, we have collected a very diverse uh, sample of aquatic insects. By far, the vast majority of the insects sampled were our blooming olive nymphs. 
for every stonefly, caddisfly, or sow bug sampled on this section of the river, there was probably 100 blooming olive nymphs to that sample. We have several species of stonefly, two species of golden stonefly, some yellow sallies, and some very large salmon flies. Also, a number of caseless caddis, sow bugs, and midges. We're gonna get a little deeper now and start matching it to the best patterns in your fly box. By far the largest hatch and life cycle sampled were our blooming olive mayfly nymphs. For every caddisfly, stonefly, or midge that were found in our sample, there's probably 50 to 100 blooming olive nymphs. And this is gonna be true throughout the entire South Platte section in the spring. Their color is gonna vary from a dark olive or brown to this creamy, freshly molted yellow color. So, the types of patterns that are gonna be effective on the South Platte in the spring are gonna be small pheasant tail patterns in a size 18 to a 22, jujubatus, the chocolate thunder, Cheeseman Emerger, RS2, Greg's Emerger, or as a combo pattern for those rainbows that are getting ready to spawn in the spring, the Firebead Hare's Ear has that nice creamy, freshly molted mayfly color with the addition of an egghead, and this is gonna blow up the trout. The second most abundant food that we sampled on this section of river were our caddis larvae. These are a caseless, free living caddis larva and their color is a dark brown to an olive chartreuse belly. Um, these caddis vary in size from about a size 18 to a 14 hook. Most of our caddis larvae are going to be tied to a curved shank hook. Good patterns to match this family on this day are going to be our beadhead olive woven caddis larva, the buckskin, or the jelly cord caddis larva. Among the largest, highest calorie foods available to the trout in the South Platte right now are our stonefly nymphs. We found some large salmonfly nymphs. This is about a two-year-old salmonfly, and it would need to stay in the water for about another year before it's ready to crawl out and hatch. We have two species of golden stonefly nymph, and within those two species, we've also found two generations. We had some larger size 10 and 12 stonefly nymphs, and all the way down to a size 16 or a 14 as well. Finally, we sampled some yellow sally nymphs, one of our smallest stonefly species in the canyon, and this will be hatching in the late summer. So, patterns like the brown or yellow stonefly nymph would be really diverse, covering multiple hatches here in the canyon. The Pat's rubber leg, either in black, brown, or a mottled golden brown would be a good match. The iron sally or the beadhead poxyback little yellow stone. Best known for being fished on the Bighorn River in Montana or the White River in Arkansas, here also on the South Platte you will find sow bugs. Very similar to a terrestrial roly-poly or pill bug, the sow bug is a high calorie crustacean that grows and can support trophy fisheries. A good pattern to imitate this sow bug would be the Ray Charles. We have a number of sizes of sow bug in our sample today, varying from a size 22 all the way up to a size 16. Um, but what we have with us are some 18s, and that's going to be true to the dominant size of the sow bugs in the South Platte this time of year. Whenever fishing a tailwater section of a river located beneath the dam, you are going to find a number of midge larvae. Today, we found black fly larvae clinging to the rocks in the ripples, and a number of burrowing coronamid larvae, varying in color from a, a tan or a cream to a blaze orange red or a gray brown color. While the sizes vary from a size 18 down to a 24, the dominant size midges in our samples vary between a size 20 and 22 hook. The best midge patterns in your fly box for fishing these tailwaters in the winter are gonna be your beadhead zebra midge in either black or red, the black beauty, the young special or the bling midge, the Ian's brass ass, and then as those midges start to swim up towards the surface, two hats throughout the day, patterns like the zebra midge pupa, beadhead zebra midge pupa, or the disco midge can be very good and productive patterns. Another thing to consider when choosing flies when fishing the South Platte in the winter is these cold temperatures and low flows. Fish are gonna be stacked up in the deep, slow pools, and they're gonna be looking for some high calorie food after a long, slow winter. We're either gonna start with the Pat's rubber leg in a size 12, or this jelly cord caddis larva. Our second pattern, which is gonna be riding a little higher in the water column, is gonna be a mercury pheasant tail or a jujubatus. 
Once you move above the Marston diversion, it's going to be artificial flies and learners only. Also, and you'll notice that we don't have that manufactured series of pools and weirs that we saw on the lower half of the canyon. Instead, you're going to have a more natural pocket water type complex, which is a ton of fun to fish and has much less pressure from anglers. If you're looking for some solitude, more water to yourself, and the opportunity to see some wildlife, I encourage you to get up and fish the upper section of the river. So we're about five miles up the canyon, and this is unfortunately where the tour is going to end today. So there is a number of resident herds of bighorn sheep here in the canyon. So what an awesome opportunity that 15, 20 minutes from Denver, you can come out and see some amazing nature like this. So these four rams are locking down the path right now. We're going to leave them to it, and we'll find some more fish and water downstream. Thank you for joining us today as we explored, sampled, and broke down the South Platte River through Waterton Canyon. If you like this video, please subscribe and leave your comments. Maybe there's specific patterns or tips that you'd like to share with the community on how you fish Waterton Canyon. Also, if you need any of the gear or flies shown in the videos today, you can get those at ascentflyfishing.com and the tools at riveroracle.com. Mm -hmm.